Good afternoon. So what I want to talk to you about today is an idea that I think is particularly important, a skill that I've found very useful throughout my career. It's something that hopefully you're applying in all of your classes, but it's something you're unlikely to take a class in. I think of this skill as a true intellectual foundation, and equally, investing time in this skill is like investing in your intellect. So what I think you guys should be learning is pretty meta. I want you to learn how to learn. This is a really, this is a compounding skill. The more you learn how to learn, the better you get at it. Not only the better you are at gaining new skills, but the, the better you become at learning how to learn. Now these days, if you want to gain a new skill, you only need two things. You need to know the name of that skill, and you need to be committed to learning it. Once you've got those two things, you can Google and figure out what the next steps are. Now Google is both a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because it helps you find those next steps. But the curse of Google is that no matter what skill you Google for, you will find thousands of people who are vastly, vastly better at it than you are. Now this is disheartening. Because it seems like no matter how hard you try, you'll never be that good. And the cold, hard reality is, despite what your mother may have told you, it's unlikely that you will ever be the best at anything in the world. <laughs> now this sounds bleak, but it's actually really freeing. Because it means you can't, if the only way you can gain joy is by being the best at something, you're going to have an unhappy life. So what you should be trying to do is enjoy the skills regardless of the level that you're at. The other reality is that most people give up too early. There's no such thing as an overnight success, and truly mastering a skill takes up often years of sustained practice. But I think many people fail too soon because they don't understand the secret of frustration. Now, when you're learning a new skill, at first, it's really, really frustrating. Even trying to receive the simplest thing takes hours of struggle and pain. It's so incredibly frustrating. The secret of frustration, however, is that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing. It took me too long to realize this. So I've always known if you're doing a physical activity, if you want to get good at something physical like running, you have to learn to push yourself. Your body is lazy, it's going to tell you, no, you can't run anymore, go home, watch some TV, drink a beer. If you want to get good at that, every day you have to push a little bit further past your limits, what you thought your limits were. Now, the same thing applies to intellectual activities. Your brain is lazy, it's going to try and tell you, this is too hard, this is too frustrating, you should give up and do something fun. And I've recently noticed my brain kind of does this. When I'm trying to work on something hard, it sort of skitters and my, my hands sort of almost by themselves switch to Twitter or to Facebook or to email or something fun. So the key at getting good at a skill is to recognize that frustration is really important. Frustration is your brain trying to be lazy, and if you can, every day you can push past that a little bit more, in time you'll get better. Now, as you start to get better at a skill, you get some really powerful positive feedback because you can actually achieve something useful, and when you can do that, it feels fantastic. You have to be a little bit careful, though, not to get caught in a positive reinforcement loop. If everything you do feels fantastic that me and not frustrating, that means you're learning slower than you could be. One technique I think is really useful when you're, when you're at this point of learning a skill is a scientific process. You want to consciously and carefully craft hypotheses, test them, and record the results. Even if all you do is buy a notebook and record your progress, it's much, much harder to lie to yourself on paper than it is to lie to yourself in your head. The scientific principle is also really useful when you're choosing between different resources like books or websites. My advice is if you're choosing between two resources, you always want to pick the one that has the most scientific focus. So for example, my hobbies are baking, barbecue, and cocktails. Uh, you might notice a common theme there. 
And some resources that I've found particularly helpful because of this scientific bent are America's Test Kitchen, which tries out hundreds of recipes and not only explains the results, but tells you why they tried those variations. Amazingribs.com te teaches you how to calibrate your barbecue, a very scientific idea, by toasting bread on it so you can find the hot and the cold spot spots. And finally, there's a great book called DIY Cocktails that tells you how to do a sequence of experiments that helps you discover the flavors that you enjoy the most. So my message to you is this, learn how to learn. It's a skill that truly compounds over time. Learn the secret of frustration. If you can consistently push past that frustrating point a little bit every day, and you can do that for years, potentially, there's no reason that you can't become world-renowned in any skill that you choose. Thank you.